Hi, welcome back. In this advanced video, we're going to talk about using the new controls in Genuine Fractals 5. This includes the texture control pane, sharpening pane, and film grain pane. We're also going to talk about how to automate Genuine Fractals using actions inside of Photoshop. But first, let's talk about these new controls. Texture control, sharpening, and film grain should all be previewed at the 1 to 1 or 100% view. And again, the easiest way to do that is to click on the 1 to 1 zoom preset in the top of the navigator pane. The texture control helps to bring out additional information in the smooth areas of your image that still contained information. These type of textured or patterned areas are common in nature and are seen in rock patterns as well as the bark on trees and a man-made texture such as fabrics. The default settings for texture control are an amount of 3 and a threshold of 25. If you used Genuine Fractals 4 in the past, these would be the internal settings that it was using. Now in Genuine Fractals 5, you have the ability to adjust these. Increasing the amount slider will bring up more information in these smooth texture areas. Going too high may introduce more noise than you'd like. Control controls how much hard edge detail is enhanced in your image. A good way to adjust these controls is to set the threshold all the way to 100 and then increase the amount one at a time watching the texture areas of your image. You'll see with an amount of 5 that I've brought up too much information or too much noise in that background area. So I'm going to reduce back to an amount of 4. At 4, I can still see the enhanced information. Now I can adjust the threshold down to help smooth that out if necessary. With this image, a setting of about an amount of 4 and a threshold of 50 will probably give me very good results. I'll usually use a higher amount on images that contain a lot of texture and not a lot of smooth tone like skin, sand, or sky. Oftentimes, landscape images will use an amount of 4 and a high threshold, where portrait images will probably use a lower amount and a lower threshold. Now let's talk about the sharpening control. The sharpening in Genuine Fractals 5 uses an unsharp mass technology similar to Photoshop. It's designed to help you compensate for dot gain, or basically the loss in sharpness that you see when you print your file. We've included it here to help save you a step after you've resized your image before you print. Now, if you're planning on doing more work to your image after Genuine Fractals, we'd recommend not to use the sharpening now. Or, if you plan on using a third-party selective sharpening tool like Nick Sharpener Pro, you'd want to leave the sharpening disabled as well. To use sharpening, make sure you're zoomed in to one-to-one. -to -one. Then turn the sharpening on by using the on-off toggle at the top of the sharpening pane. There's three controls in sharpening, a radius, an amount, and a threshold. Typically, you want to use a radius of 1 to 2. If your image was sharp to start with, you want to use a low radius. If your image was a little soft to start with, you might try a radius as high as 3 or 4. This image was pretty sharp when I started, so I'm actually going to use a low radius of 1. The next step will be to reduce the threshold all the way to zero. This gives me the maximum amount of sharpening effect. Then, I'll adjust the amount up until it appears to be slightly over sharpened. At this case, this will probably occur anywhere between 100 and 200. I'm going to try an amount of 150. Then, slowly increase the threshold until the over sharpening appearance disappears and any noise that was created minimizes. This will probably be around a setting of 4 to 8. There we go. The last control we'll talk about is the new film grain control. It has the same type of on-off toggle as the sharpening pane does. I'm going to start by turning that on, and if you watch the background of the image, you'll see a grain pattern appear. This simulated film grain can often make your image appear sharper visually. It's a well-known optical illusion. The film grain can also help smooth out areas in your image, like JPEG artifacts. I find film grain especially helpful when I'm working with very small images or monochrome or black and white images. To set the film grain, turn it on and then simply move the strength left or right depending on whether you want more or less noise based on the default setting. A good way to preview the effect on and off is just to toggle the on off indicator back and forth, which will allow you to see the effect on and off quickly. Once you've got everything set the way you'd like, just click the apply button in the bottom right of the interface. Now let's talk about automating Genuine Fractals using an action inside of Photoshop. Before you start to record an action, be sure you check the preferences in Genuine Fractals. You can do this by going to the Photoshop menu on the Mac or the Edit menu on Windows and selecting Genuine Fractals Preferences. 
it's important to pick the correct parameter that you want Genuine Fractals to record when you create an action. The default is to remember the pixel dimensions, but you can also select the resolution or the magnification percentage. In this case, I want to use pixel dimensions. Let's go back to Photoshop. Start by opening up your Actions palette. Then, click on the New Actions button in the toolbar at the bottom. That'll be the one that looks like a little post-it note. Give your action a name so you can find it easily in the future. What I want to do with this action is resize my image to 24 inches wide. So I'm just going to call it Resize to 24 inches. Then click the Record button. It will now record every step that I do in Photoshop or a plugin until I click the Stop button. So now that it's recording, I'm going to take my image, launch Genuine Fractals, and now I'm just going to type in the size that I wanted. So I'm going to change my width to 24 inches and my resolution to 240 for my printer. You'll notice that the pixel dimensions are 7200 by 5760. Those are what Genuine Fractals is going to record into the action. Once it's set, I just click the Apply button. Once Genuine Fractals has returned your file to Photoshop, just click the Stop button in the bottom of the Actions palette. Now let's take a look at the action that we recorded. We can see right here in the Actions palette, there's the Resize to 24 inch name, and if we roll it down, we can see the steps that were actually recorded. You'll notice that it says Scale by Pixel Dimensions, which was the setting that we selected in the Genuine Fractals Preferences. And then it lists the width and height in pixels, and it will also show the settings that I had selected in my texture, sharpening, and film grain palettes. Keep in mind when you record an action that those settings will be recorded and applied as well. Now, to use this action in the future, all I do is open an image, select the Resize to 24 inch action, and press the play button in the actions palette. Well, that about covers it for the advanced techniques video for Genuine Fractals 5. There's a couple topics we didn't get to cover, like saving and opening Sting files, as well as creating and managing your own document size presets. You can learn about those by using the Genuine Fractals user guide, which can be launched from the help menu. You can also learn more about Genuine Fractals by visiting the On1 Software website. 